What is going on, y'all? Robert Sykes, KetoSavage.com. Welcome to the second episode of the Keto Bulk series. So, I switched gears a little bit on this one. So, I am in a building phase. Obviously, the priority is to build as much lean tissue as possible. So, prioritizing hypertrophy and strength gaining as kind of a way to track progress. So, rather than looking at a drop in body fat or a reduction in scale weight, I am looking for increases in weight on the bar, increase in lean tissue, all those good metrics there. With the priority being to build as much muscle as possible, how could it possibly make sense to eat zero calories? Which is exactly what I've done for the past 75, 80 hours. So I am, uh, at the time of this recording, about 75 or 80 hours into an extended fast. Um, And let's talk about that for a little bit, because I am not an advocate for extended fasting in the context of a caloric deficit. So if you are dieting down for a show, it's very tempting to want to do an extended fast as well. Do not advocate for that because it's too many stressors on the body. If you're also reducing your calories, you're in a net caloric deficit, and you also do an extended fast, and you're taking in zero calories, that's just too many stressors on the body. A lot of the benefits that you get from being in a deficit you know, come when you're fasting and vice versa. So you don't have to do both. However... In a building phase, when I'm at a pretty aggressive caloric surplus, I do sometimes incorporate extended fasting on a somewhat regular or strategic basis. Um, So I have not done an extended fast in quite some time. This is honestly the first one I've done in probably over two or three years now. Um, And I'll probably start implementing this on a quarterly basis going forward throughout this building phase. And here's why. So... There's obviously a lot of benefits to fasting. You got the cell apoptosis, programmed cell death, autophagy, all these buzzwords you hear about fasting, basically killing off any of the old and decrepit cells, making room for new growth, new cells, and just improving overall cellular efficiency. Think of it kind of like this. When you are a caffeine junkie and you are taking in a ton of caffeine, as I used to do, um, you have to take in more caffeine in order to elicit a similar response. However, if you cut that caffeine consumption drastically, let those receptor sites clear up, and then you incorporate a smaller dose of caffeine in the future, that smaller dose is actually more effective at providing that energy and stimulus than that higher dose was prior to that washout period. The same is kind of true in regards to being in a caloric surplus and taking advantage of full nutrient absorption after an an extended fast. And here's what I mean by that. So prior to this fast, I had been, you know, pretty much at the end of my reverse diet. I've been increasing calories pretty aggressively since uh, the end of my prep. And I was consuming between 4,500 and 5,500 calories a day on average, honestly, more towards the 5,500 calorie mark. Lots of protein, lots of fat, very few carbs. I mean, more total carbs as a result of just more trace carbs adding up. But an average day of consumption for me was like, you know, 250 to 300 grams of protein, 450 grams of fat, and, you know, 40 to 50 grams of total carbs. And that is definitely all well within a ketogenic macronutrient ratio and distribution, but that's quite a bit of a caloric load on the body. It's quite a big stressor on the digestive system to to process and assimilate all that food, and that's just a lot of food in general. And I can tolerate that well. Um, I, I, I wasn't overly full or force feeding at that intake, but I just started to feel a little bit more, uh, you know, lack of efficiency. Like I felt a little bit more joint pain and inflammation. My blood glucose was trending a little bit higher. My blood ketones were trending a little bit lower as a result of that higher protein consumption. And let's talk about that for a second. So when you're super aggressive with your protein, like I was at 350 grams of protein a day, a lot of people are going to talk about gluconeogenesis and that being demand-driven rather than supply-driven. There's been studies that showcase that gluconeogenesis is demand-driven, not supply-driven. However, in the context of extremes, whether you're in a caloric deficit extreme, low body fat in the prep, or in a caloric surplus extreme in a building phase, the extremes kind of have to have rules of their own, so to speak. And if you're trying to maximize fat metabolism and optimize around a ketogenic approach consistently inundating your system with that much protein is going to result in a gluconeogenic effect, which is why my blood glucose started trending up and my blood ketones started trending down. My body is still primed for fat metabolism. I'm still running on ketones, but I'm not maximizing my fat metabolism potential by consuming that much protein for that long. 
However, by incorporating these strategic extended fasts, I can burn through any of that, uh, you know, circulating blood glucose, ramp up circulating blood ketones, improve those metabolic pathways, so that when I do go back into that surplus, my body is more receptive to that food intake, uh, it absorbs it, those nutrients more efficiently, and I've got better nutrient assimilation, assimilation in the first place. So I can maximize the potential of those calories I'm consuming, which is exactly what I'm going to do going forward. So kind of a long-winded approach here, but my approach to being able to tolerate those higher calories in this building phase is to have these planned maybe quarterly periods of you know 72 80 hour fasts so that i can basically wipe the slate clean similar to that uh, caffeine analogy and then just improve overall efficiency and metabolic pathway signaling going forward at this higher intake so that's how i'm going to make this surplus more efficient um, and just more tolerable in the first place so having gone you know 75 hours now without food i feel a reduction in joint pain and inflammation i feel an increase in mental acuity my blood ketones have been averaging 1.6 1.7 my blood glucose is 66 67 uh, so everything's trending in the right direction um, which is exactly what i was hoping to see um, plus i think it's good to to you know flex those metabolic muscles so to speak every once in a while and have a period of time where you're not eating copious amounts of food in a surplus eating that much food and being that aggressive with a surplus is a tax on the digestive system and giving your digestive system a breather from time to time is beneficial you just don't want to do that too frequently obviously or in the context of a deficit and with me trying to optimize muscle building i can't do that if i'm not eating so i've got to be very strategic in how frequently i do these extended fasts and i think a three-day fast every quarter or something is probably totally sufficient and not really needing to go any beyond that uh, so that's been pretty much my protocol with regards to the food uh, looking at my chart here in chronometer <clears throat> you can basically see i had about 5,000 calories on thursday and then have dropped off since then during this fast uh, my weight was let's see here 192 192 and now i am 185.9 so dropped pretty good bit of weight with this fast that will all mostly come back once I start eating more food so no worries there um, so that's to be expected that's pretty much what we're looking like from a calorie standpoint and average and from a weight standpoint I'm probably going to like I said stay between about 3,500 and 5,500 calories in this building phase so that I can make sure that I'm cycling between you know a healthy modulation of calories healthy modulation of body weights and just prioritize building as much muscle as possible um, weight training has all been very good the pictures that i'm dropping in here right now are all taken this monday right before we started recording um and these were all having fasted for you know three days now so a little bit flat in these pictures but definitely feel like i've lost a little bit of fluid uh both extra cellularly or um, uh, in the subcutaneous layer of skin rather and also intracellularly in the muscles so that's why i look a little bit flat um, but that's kind of what you got to expect after doing a fast for this long. Um, so again, that's basically just a recap on why I did an extended fast going into a building phase. Do not plan on making a habit of this, but on a quarterly basis, I think it is beneficial. So thank you all so much for tuning in, and I'll be keeping you up to date on the building progression going forward. So we will see you all next week for week three.